Kuzen, nice to meet you. Thanks everyone for being here and uh, for the Footprint team for making this partnership possible. So I'm one of the co-founders of Web3 Academy DAO. So we formed this DAO within the Web3 Academy Discord that was created by Kyle and Jay around their podcast and newsletter. So our aim at Web3 Academy DAO is to help building resources, products, and services to support the wave of entrepreneurs, businesses, and Oh, I think I oh. uh, I think I lost you there, uh, Yakuza. Do you want to keep going after uh, supporting businesses? Can you hear? A little bit. It looks like you're breaking up. But uh, yeah, try after uh, businesses. There, we lost you. So you guys are aiming to support businesses, entrepreneurs. Yeah, and into the, into the Web three space. Sweet. Yeah, I'm happy to have you here. Um, you know, your goals really align with what Footprint's working for, uh, towards as well. Our goals at uh, Footprint, we want everybody to, you know, get in touch with the blockchain analytics. We want it to be as accessible or as accessible to anyone as possible, right? And uh, we want to bring you the best data and the best analytics possible, right? So you can really learn about your... Uh, if you want to go ape into a project, or if you really want to dive in, or do investments, whatever, right? Footprint is here for you. Um, so anyways, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Boris. Boris is doing our uh, on-chain data analysis for beginners today. So Boris, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, hi. <laughs> My name is Boris, and uh, uh... I'm one of the contributors to Footprint Analytics. I've been working in blockchain space for, gee, it's been like four years, I think. And I'm excited to share my knowledge and experience with you today. Sweet. Well, we're happy to have you here, Boris. Um, so uh, I guess before, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we get started? Or should I just throw the, throw the room to you? Yeah, I think we're ready to go. All right. It's all yours, bud. All right, nice. Let's go. Let's go. Um, so <laughs> I must admit that uh, I'm both nervous today and excited to be speaking in front of you all today. Um, this is my first time presenting to such a large audience. And yeah, it's even more nerve wracking uh, because I'm not a uh, English native speaker. So uh, don't worry, Boris, you'll kill it, buddy. Excited. Let's go. You're going to kill it, buddy. Let's go. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> all right. So. Um, the purpose of this workshop is to provide a um, comprehensive introduction to the world of blockchain data analysis. And um, we'll be covering the basics of blockchain technology, how um, data is stored in the blockchains and why raw data may not be enough for analysis. Uh, we're also going to be taking a closer look at our analytical tool, Footprint Analytics, and how it can be used to extract meaningful insights from blockchain data. And by the end of this workshop, you will have a solid understanding of the basics of blockchain data analysis. Uh, and you'll be equipped with the, the knowledge and skills you need to get started with on analysis. So let's get started. Um, with that being said, let's dive into the existing world of blockchain and see how it can be utilized in different industries and organizations. Blockchain analysis can help provide valuable insights in the variety of use cases, just to mention some of them. Uh, investment monitoring for the alerts. So this use case is for investors who want to monitor the investments and receive the alerts for suspicious transactions, for instance. Uh, investors can track like potential fraud or insider trading activity on cryptocurrency exchanges potentially two days or just a couple of days ahead of a major event such as an FTX collapse. Uh, you can also uh, be having some kind of like Google Analytics for crypto. So this use case is for developers who want to track their performance on their decentralized applications or protocols or just crypto assets, this tool can provide similar insights to Google Analytics, but for the world 
of crypto. <laughs> allowing the developers to understand user behavior and engagement and etc. So uh, finally, game fire analysis. Um, so this is use case for analysts and media who are interested in the gaming industry and growth of blockchain games. I love that right, game so fire data. I love that game fire <laughs> data. <laughs> buddy, yeah. All right, really uh, like Bo uh, Boris. Before uh, before we keep going, yeah. I want to ask: Is there any questions so far about any of the content you have? Uh, you guys have seen so far. Um, if you guys have any questions, please post them in the community sharing. I'll be happy to answer them. And also, be sure to check yep. out I posted Web3 Academy's Discord in that sharing as well. So if you haven't joined that yet, go and join it. All right, Boris, back to you. Thanks, Alex. So um, to fully understand the potential of blockchain in these use cases, we need to have a solid understanding of what blockchain technology is and how it works. So um, let's move on the, to the next chapter where we'll cover the basics of blockchain technology. So we'll be talking about the fundamentals of raw data on uh, Ethereum virtual machine, EVM, including the uh, various analysis scenarios. So additionally, um, this topic will touch on why relying solely on raw data may not be sufficient in certain cases. So um, what exactly is a blockchain? Um, simply put, it's a decentralized digital ledger that records transactions across multiple computers in the secure and transparent manner. When it comes to Storing data, a blockchain uses blocks to record transactions. Each block contains a identifier called a hash that connects it to the previous block, creating a chain of blocks. This means that it's nearly impossible to alter past transactions, ensuring the integrity of and transparency of data. Uh, blockchain have a number of uh, distinctive features, including transparency. So all transactions recorded on blockchain are available to view by anyone in the network. Immutability, once a block is added to the blockchain, it cannot be changed or deleted. Finally, pseudonymity. Although all transactions are visible in the blockchain, the identities of participants are kept private. They are identified using their public addresses, which is just a string of letters and numbers. Now that we have a better understanding of the basics of blockchain, let's dive into the raw data and how it's stored on the blockchain in the example of EVM. So uh, what, are, what is EVM? What are the EVM compatible chains? So EVM or Ethereum virtual machine is a runtime environment for smart contracts, aka computer programs that automatically execute the terms of the contract. And uh, uh, those programs are built on top of Ethereum and other Ethereum-based uh, blockchain blockchains. So the raw data in the EVM-compatible chains is stored in various forms, including EVM locks, traces, smart contracts, events, and bytecode. Um, let's talk more about traces and locks. So, in short, traces provide a low-level representation of the internal state of smart contracts, while locks are a higher-level mechanism for smart contracts to communicate with outside world. So, locks are created by smart contracts events, and they provide a record of contracts interactions with the blockchain. On the image above, uh, you can see where FSCAN, the most popular uh, EVM compatible block explorer, is having the lock displayed. Understanding how to access and extract the raw data is crucial for effective analysis. And as you can see on this slide, we have a comparison between FSCAN and our own platform. I'm going to be giving a broad introduction to our platform a little bit later. For now, just please keep in mind that both FSCAN and Footprint stores raw data, EVM raw data. So on the left, um, you have FSCAN displaying the transaction info. Uh, on the right, you have the same uh, data about uh, in our platform. Same about logs and same about traces. And uh, now that we've covered the raw data available for analysis, let's take a look 
at how this information can be used to gain valuable insights. With raw data, you can analyze and visualize various key metrics to understand the performance of different crypto assets or uh, yeah, just a state of blockchain. Just an example to analyze gas fees. So you can see uh, the, chart, uh, the chart on the demo, as well as to understand the, decentral, for instance, decentralized exchange activities such as Uniswap. So by examining the events emitted by popular DAX like Uniswap, you can gain a better understanding of the trading activity taking place on the platform. All right, while raw data is a very, very valuable resource, it may not be enough for comfortable analytics. So now let's take a closer look at the data. One of the key challenges in the blockchain ecosystem is the heterogeneity of different chains. So each chain has its own unique features, data structures, and implementations. Referencing NFTs, for instance, EVM compatible chains such as Ethereum have a ERC721 standard for NFTs, while Polkadot has completely different standards. And despite this diversity, a good analytical tool should allow um, to seamlessly merge transactions from these completely different chains into a single entity which in the example of traditional databases may be stored in the table that is called NFT transactions. So this not only simplifies the uh, analysis process, but also provides a comprehensive overview of NFT market across different chains. Um, Alex, do we have... Uh... Any yeah. Questions for now? So I guess we just uh, touched on a little bit of the basics on the blockchain traces, logs, events, etc. Um, and it is a little bit complicated. So now, if you guys have any questions you'd like clarified here, uh, we've seen uh, Sophia said, "What about non EVM raw data?" I saw that we touched on that a little bit, um, as Polkadot, for example. But another example would be Solana. Um, Solana is uh, very difficult to index compared to EVM compatible chains to the amount of transfers and um, you know <laughs> in the devs words fluff that you have to go through uh, which makes it a lot more difficult to get the raw data from compared to EVM chains um, so you know anything that's non EVM that definitely poses its own challenges and you its own unique uh, ways of tackling uh, getting it indexed um, but yeah it's, if there's any other questions Boris I'll pretty much give it back to you all right so, um, as we have seen, um, raw data alone is not enough to provide a complete, a meaningful analysis of blockchain activities. Um, this is where our tools, footprint analytics, comes in. Um, in the following chapter, we'll take a closer look at footprint analytics and what makes it a what makes it stand out from the rest, uh, from its data model to its advanced features to comprehensive coverage of multiple chains, we will show how can you benefit in your blockchain journey. And uh, we're going to be starting with our data model. So um, our data model is based on the medallion architecture, which organizes and structures the raw data into more meaningful and usable form. We split data into three layers, bronze, silver, and gold. The bronze level is where we store the raw and transform data straight from the blockchain. This layer consists of detailed records of all activities on the blockchain, including transactions, locks, and traces that I've been previously talking about, and other info as it's stored in the original form right on the blockchain. The silver level, takes the raw bronze data and transform it into sets of data that add additional values. The process involves replacing code with meaningful values, adding some sanity constraints, filtering out unneeded information, and so on and so forth. Finally, the gold layer. The gold layer is the final layer in our architecture. It consists of business level, 
data aggregations mostly. So the goal of this layer is to directly answer the main specific questions and provide ready to use statistical metrics for analysis. So as you can see uh, with uh, our innovative data model, we provide a deeper and more comprehensive understanding of data using uh, various abstractions of uh, raw data. And I think now it's a <laughs> best time to talk about things that Footprint has already achieved. So just a quick rundown of uh, what our tools offer. So we cover 24 chains, including big players such as Ethereum, Binance Chain, Bitcoin, Solana, Polygon. We've got a ton of NFT collections indexed, over 700,000 to be exact. We also keep the number of more than 2,000 GameFi protocols and other 100,000 tokens. And uh, what's the best part? We've uh, found a balance between flexibility and simplicity, making it super user friendly for even the newest of blockchain enthusiasts to perform a blockchain analysis. AKA, so, we got all your data, baby. All of your data. You want data? Guess what? Do. Footprint probably got it. So let's go. Exactly, we do. So in the world of um, data analysis and blockchain, uh, finding a tool that strikes the right balance between flexibility and simplicity can be a challenge. So that's where we come in. Um, with our drag and drop interface, you get the best of the both worlds. Um, it provides a simple user-friendly interface for those who are new to data analysis and blockchain, while also offering the flexibility to build more complex queries and work with data using code. We're new talking codes. about zero the... coding, baby. Zero coding. Oh, yeah. That's right. You can make <laughs> analytics without having to code with our drag and drop system. It's sweet. Let's go. Yeah. So this means that you can use Footprint even if you have a limited technical skills, but um, you also have an option to delve into the details if you choose. And uh, um, yeah, if you're looking to dive deeper into insights and analysis provided by our analytical tool, uh, of course, uh, be sure to check out our website at footprint.network. Not only we do a comprehensive uh, have a comprehensive web interface, but we also offer an API with special features to suit your specific needs. So our API is split into two parts, REST API and SQL API, uh, each with own advantages and disadvantages. But my favorite one is, of course, the SQL API, as it is highly flexible and compatible with the queries used in our web application. And for those looking to integrate our data into your software setup, our SQL API offers a versatile solution. So by creating charts in web interface and validating the data, you can be confident in your integration efforts. So here are some other examples that could be built with our platform using an easy to use drag and drop interface with an abstracted data. Um, Address analysis scenarios, tracking money flow. So uh, something that I've already been talking about previously. Um, token analysis scenarios, so ref relevance analysis. Um, then our protocol analysis scenarios provide a in-depth look into specific game file protocols. Um, our Token okay, analysis provides a comprehensive cross-chain overview of a particular token performance, including its market capitalization, price movements, and trading volume. Our NFT analysis scenarios give you a comprehensive understanding of the NFT market, including the overall volume and changes over time. So uh, a pro hint. <laughs> If you want to gain an insight into how a particular chart on our platform was constructed, you should follow the following steps. So I'm going to be giving an example uh, on the charts that are 
uh, present on that slide. So I'm going to be opening a dashboard. So a dashboard is just a collection of charts. So that's, uh, yeah, that's the primitive of uh, our platform. And once you uh, have the dashboard open, you're going to be seeing multiple charts. And yeah, you can choose any of those uh, to like see how exactly was it built. I'm going to be choosing this one. Uh, 30 days NFT volume by marketplaces. So once I press to its name, I got another tab open where I can only see this exact chart. Once it's being loaded, I can allocate the preview button in the um, right top corner. If I press this button, another tab is going to be opening. And uh, this tab is a construction, is a constructor, um, drag and drop constructor, no code constructor that is used to build the charts. Uh, for some reason, data fetching failed, so I'm going to be retrying it. So once it's loading, um, yeah. It's loaded. So uh, once uh, on, on the left hand side, you can see all the tables that we support on the uh, right side, you can see the data that you're currently working with. So once it's loaded, you can press the uh, advanced button and uh, uh, you're going to be having a query constructor view opening. So uh, let's just go through this. Uh, query so that you can like understand and that it's really easy to uh, work with our platform. So um, as you can see, this chart is uh, taking data from table called NFT transactions. It's filtering those NFT transactions by those that were executed within um, last 30 days. Then it dumps the value of all those transactions, grouping them by a marketplace slug, just by a marketplace name. And finally, we just sort it by, the, by this sum of value. Pressing the visualize button, you're receiving this beautiful chart. All right, coming back. Slides. Boris, I've got a question. Can we break down the NFTs by category, like music NFTs and stuff like that? Uh, we don't have segments for uh, breaking into the different categories of NFTs yet. Uh, but I believe if you, you can do it through SQL, right, Boris? Yeah, I think you do, but you'll probably have to do some part of uh, the transactions labeling by yourself. Uh, contracts labeling, yeah, I would say. Yeah, you'd have to segment yeah, them yeah, yourself. Is... Also, we got a couple questions here, Boris. Um, so one of them is by World Funk, and his is the data analyzed only meaningful as long as it comes from a source that you trust. So in today's world of doubt and distrust to exchanges or whatever, how do you make sure you get real data, uh, data from trustful sources? Good question. A, a great question. Well, uh, if we're considering a blockchain, a trustful serv uh, service, then uh, yeah, I think, so he, he, there you go, here's an answer. So um, we're, we're fetching the data from blockchain and we're just doing the ETL on top of raw data making the abstractions that I've been uh, referencing previously. Um, we're going to be, we're going to be making a, uh, our indexer completely open sourced. So ever, anybody could like be able to check the code and check the exact logic of, um, those, uh, tables being created. So you can validate by yourself whether, um, it's working essentially it's we work. get the data straight from the nodes right from the blockchain uh, i guess verified through our system and we constantly check it so um <laughs> right now our data is at like 97 98 accurate which uh is really good yeah. uh that is really good uh, especially for uh, when you compare it to other data providers out there um now don't get me wrong. I say this every time, but you know, it's always a good idea to verify your data 
wherever you get it right check multiple sources of this data that you're querying uh because that's just honestly just the best way to do it um it's, you, if you're if you've been an analyst a long time you know and you probably it's probably second nature to you so i always recommend even using footprint um always double check right it's always a good uh, suggestion for anybody that's uh, if they're unsure about the quality of the data. <clears throat> so what's the best way to check the, the data source? What uh, criteria can we have around that? How do we recommend checking the data? Uh, well, you can use other platforms as well, other data platforms. You can go like Etherscan, for example, to make sure. Um, <clears throat> essentially, just verifying through you can follow it all the way through so like through the blockchain itself like so yeah just use other data platforms that are available to you uh boris would you have anything you maybe want to add on to that yeah on top of that you can review the source code to see whether like it, it works how it's supposed to work yeah. thank you um and then also we got another question who is the main target client for footprint um so right now we love developers if you're a developer and you want to say you're working on your own project and you want to easily organize your own data um without having to do it yourself we're a great solution for you uh gamefi uh, if you <clears throat> we're offering a really great go-to-market solution for uh gamefi devs to help uh, monitor their users um and accurately do airdrops and you know um, user funnels etc etc so that's great um, so through our API or if you're just if you're just a beginner analyst and you want to get into making your own charts and dashboards our front end UI is great for that as well so uh, we like I said um, you can if you're interested in our API you can check that out um, and you can really do a lot with it or you can just start making charts and dashboards with our front end it really just depends uh, what stage of analytics you're in and looking for. All right. Uh, next question is, what is the collection delay? Right now, our collection delay for uh, most EVM chains for the raw data is about five minutes. Uh, we're looking about silver data for under three-hour latency, and then our gold data is about 24 hours. Now, our non-EVM chains are a little bit slower on latency. Um, so I say for Solana, for example, it's about 24-hour latency all the way through. Um, but our EVMs are really great for getting you as quick and accurate data as possible. Um, and what about the analysis of transactions that occur on centralized exchanges? Boris, I feel like this is the perfect time for you to show off our foot race. Yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, and also to promote our article about FTX collapse. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> put trace <laughs> that I So Alex, a word to you. Yeah, so this is our footrace.io. So essentially, uh, Boris, if you want to go to, yes, uh, monitor set alert there, you can see we have the top centralized exchange. Uh, their address is already up here and you can set alerts so that in case uh, you're worried about holding your assets on a centralized exchange and you want to get them out uh, before they get locked up, this is a great way to do it. Um, and you can actually do this with um uh our api as well or you can go to foot race and set alerts these alerts right now currently go right to your email but we can all we're working on getting them set up for your discord and uh, telegram as well uh just a little bit tricky with the bots but that's what it is it's pretty sweet if you guys haven't checked out foot race let me uh share it in the chat here Anything you'd like to add on, Boris? No, it was just... And yeah, uh, probably also... Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, you can also do this not just with centralized exchanges, but any address. All right, so um, you can search, see search address. You can type in any address that you have and you want to monitor and set alerts for it that way. Um, so foot rates. Um, it's really sweet. Uh, I know we go a little bit off topic about transactions that occur on centralized exchanges, but it works. 
Um, so contract labeling, Boris, this is a good question for you. Contract labeling, like with metadata, so this was regarding categories for like music NFTs, etc. Would this would we label it through the metadata? Or with yeah, the metadata? Um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we do so there are basically like um two ways for uh for the analysts to receive like uh off chain off chain data. So it's either like provided by us by footprint analytics or by the community. The community could provide it in the form of um like CSV data uploads and uh, uh that could be uh, like implemented so that those are like regularly updated and uh, there are different forms to like implement like those data labeling tables uh so yeah basically two ways to do it nice can we explain again the the different levels of data the gold and silver a little bit more in detail boris all right, yeah. Um, Alex, do you want to give an explanation? Yeah, so the simplest way possible is just picture it as all the raw data, but the silver, the silver table has more filters on it, right? It has another filter or definition to se uh, segment it. And then the gold has even more filters on top of it. Um, so it's that's why it takes longer for us to index it, because we're adding more filters to the data to get you more specific metrics. Um, I guess that would be the simplest way I could explain it. Uh, uh, was there anything you'd like to go on in a bit more detail, Boris? Uh, yeah, for the goal level, not only the data is filtered, it's it sometimes could be aggregated like on some schedule, for instance. If the table is called like daily ga daily game five stats, it means that our ETL once a day executes some calculations that are like uh, based on the silver data tables. Not only these filters are done, but also the aggregations are completed. So that's why it's called like daily stats. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I guess, the best explanation about our data layers. Right. Thank you. Right. We've got another question in the chat. Got it. Could also be input through a CSV to track categories. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. Boris? Yeah, you can basically like upload any info <laughs> from the real world and do some, for instance, correlation analysis or anything. Yeah, so CSV for categories, of course. Yeah, so pretty much if you have something like your own kind of ways you want to filter or manipulate the data by, by via your uploads, you can. It's really just up to you uh, and what how you want to do your own analysis. Cool. Boris, hit the next slide, guys. I want to show them what's going down. We got a little practice for you guys. Want to do it as clean as possible out the gate. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so you guys, uh, we got a practice coming up, okay? Um, and let me show you, uh, get the link started here again. So I'll post it in. If you guys use this link to sign up with F Footprint uh, Analytics, you guys get a, get a seven-day trial of our business account. Why are we doing this? Well, we have a little practice for you guys if you want to, you know, Start making your own analytics. Um, well, well, I want to see your favorite dashboard or your favorite project. A uh, dashboard on your favorite project showing a minimum of the five charts with different metrics. And if you guys do that, I will give you a one month uh, pro account to Footprint. And then we got a little bonus, all right? So if you actually upload some off chain data to compare with the on chain data, guess what? Scratch that one month. I'm making it two months. Let's go. All right. So if you guys, uh, how to submit that is just post it in our general chat or our blockchain analysis chat. Say, hey, this is the practice from the Web3 Academy DAO workshop, and I will get you set up.
up okay let's go um, and make sure again use that link that I uh, put above there so you can get access to our business account and you know maximize your creativity on this dashboard <clears throat> Other than that, I think that's really it, you guys. Is there any other questions before I wrap it up? Again, Boris, great presentation, buddy. That was awesome. Killed it. It's buddy. No problem. Uh, Yakuza, is there any final thoughts that you'd like to add as well? So regarding these questions here, um, I don't really think I'm going to uh, do a raffle. I think everyone that asked a question so far is going to get a business account. So be sure to either dm me a coops or yakuza or boris when you've registered your account uh your email that you did it with or wallet address whatever um and then i'll put it into uh send it to the team and we'll get that upgraded asap all right um but yeah yakuza anything you'd like to end it with for uh, on behalf of web3 academy yeah i just wanted to thank you to all the footprint team once again and give a shout out to Candy. She was working really hard to make this uh, event possible. So yeah, just before I forgot, I'd just like to mention Candy for her hard work and all you guys. And then we had to change the server. Yeah, we've made it. We are here. And I hope everyone is enjoying. And if you could unveil a bit more of what's going on on the next one, what will happen next week? Absolutely. Yeah, so next time we are starting with our GameFi analytics uh for beginners so we're gonna do a deep uh deep dive into game fi analytics and get you guys all set up in our next workshop with web3 academy dow um so that one i'll be presenting and i hope to see you guys all there also we uh i want to see some emojis in the little discord chat here for candy let's go candy working hard to get this set up Good job. Thank you, Candy. Um, and thank you, Web3 Academy DAO, for, uh, for our first successful uh, workshop. A uh, great amount of people joined. Um, and it just was overall really great. So, Boris, thanks again. And everyone else, ciao for now.